This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. I hope that you are having a great start to your new year of 2019. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, which is about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is Corey Campbell. He is a great friend of mine and is the CEO and founder of Akamai Training and Consulting. Corey is one of the best executive performance coaches in Hawaii who works with over 50 local companies and their leaders to improve their leadership style, communication and customer service skills, and their aptitude to lead through change with the ability to motivate and drive the organization. And today, we are going beyond leadership. Corey. Hey, Rusty. Great to see you today. Good to see you, man. Nice now, to be here. You and I, we've talked for hours and hours and hours about leadership and the book and all of those things. But before we get into all of that, I want to know more about your background. Where, where did you grow up at? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, Rusty, thanks for letting me be here. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you and seeing this book come to fruition. Thank you. And uh, as I hope to get to talk about, I love what you've done with this book because it connects to everything that I know from my past. Uh, I grew up a pretty hyperactive child, um, <laughs> playing a lot of sports. I grew up with basketball, tennis, soccer. Uh, started in Oregon when I was 13. My family moved to Virginia. I was there through my teenage years. Um, I went to Virginia Tech. Uh, majored in psychology, and then my sophomore year of college, I got a thing in the mail saying National Student Exchange, and University of Hawaii was on there. Oh. And I said, well, I can go to Hawaii. And I, <laughs> I went in, and the lady said, nobody gets Hawaii. She said, it's got to be a one-to-one -one ratio. Someone's got to come to Virginia Tech. Somebody must have, because I, I got it. I spent my sophomore year at UH, fell in love with Hawaii. Um, I did a transpersonal psychology class, just fell in love with the, the people and the culture and the, the connection to the environment here. I went home and I uh, graduated at Virginia Tech, and then I knew I was going to move back here, and I did. Now, I also heard that you were like a basketball star. I mean, opinions vary. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I chased a basketball dream, Rusty. I'll say that. I left my parents when I was actually a freshman in high school, and I went to a boarding school for two years. I followed an AAU coach there. And in my last two years, I left my family entirely, and I moved up to New Jersey. And I played for one of the top basketball schools in the nation. Uh, played with guys like Shaheen Holloway and Al Harrington, who went straight to the NBA. Yeah. Amazing. And uh, at some stage, I realized may not be tall enough and be able to jump <laughs> high enough to make it to the next level. But um, chasing the dream was, was really profound and, and, and a great experience. Corey, I want to ask you, because I'm curious about this. What was your first job that you ever had? Oh, my first job? I was a server at Texas, a restaurant called Texas Steakhouse and Saloon in Stanton, Virginia. And uh, I got to say, I think every human should be a server at some stage of their career because you just, you, you learn how to take care of people. You learn the challenge of that role as well. You know, whenever I go to eat now, I'm so appreciative of everyone who's, who's doing that because it's not easy. Uh, but it was great. I, I served steaks and beers. And, and learned how to connect with people, I think, actually. Okay, and since then, since that job, what kinds of varieties of jobs have you had since? Oh, man, I've kind of been all over. So I've done data entry in college. Um, when I got out of college, I came back here. Let's see, I got my first job um, doing serving. I was a bartender at Bubba Gump Shrimp Company in Ottawa, Moana. Yeah. Amazing. I, I learned from that role, just have fun every single day and, and help people have fun and life is great. Uh, I moved to Japan. I taught English for three years. Uh, my last year there, I was the prefectural advisor, so I was kind of helping onboard new English teachers to Japan. Uh, then I came back to Hawaii, and I got my first role in hotels, and I was a guest services manager at Sheridan Waikiki, uh, basically getting yelled at for about 12 <laughs> hours a day and trying to help people overcome their obstacles to enjoy their, their experience and their stay. And uh, then I moved and I opened up Rum Fire back in 2008. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a phenomenal experience. And then I moved to the Royal Hawaiian, and I was a learning and development manager. Okay. And basically upgraded that hotel. We, we shifted from a Sheridan brand to the luxury collection brand, and I got to help kind of put together all the pre-opening and, and post-opening training to, to elevate that brand. 
then I joined Starwood's corporate learning and development team, and for about three years I traveled and did leadership training across North America, which was a phenomenal experience, uh, but I missed Hawaii. And I ran into my old boss, Kelly Sanders, and I said, I really want to come back to Hawaii. <laughs> this was in San Francisco at a sales kickoff. And he said, we'd love to have you back. He, he helped create a role back here working with the four, at that time, Starwood properties in Waikiki. And, and then the rest is history until I started Akamai. Wow. You know, it's, it's amazing how many jobs you've had. I mean, since that Texas uh, restaurant job. <laughs> I'm a worker. Put me to work, Rusty. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll chase balls for you, whatever you need. I'm, I'm there. <laughs> now, Corey, um, we've all been on teams in sports and business before. Um, have you ever had a bad coach or a bad boss? Ooh, <laughs> that's, you know, I've had, I've had bad coaches. I've, I've had more than I would say my fair share of bad bosses. And, um, you know, the, the most critical element, I think, in a coach or a boss is to build trust and to have support. And I've had both coaches and bosses that when things weren't going really well for them, they kind of severed. Uh, the connection to the team uh, and to me at times, and said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna just throw this on you, and I'm gonna take credit over here, and and try to make myself look good while the rest of the team may suffer." Um, unfortunately, I think that's more prevalent than we know. When I do training, I often ask people, "Have you, you know, rank your last five bosses, and how many would you say was a great leader?" And it's crazy, Rusty, but I usually hear about 20% as people rank their previous bosses. Wow, it's out there. Yeah, trust, trust and respect is so important yeah. in everything you do. And that's one of the things, I mean, ever since we started talking and how did you build a culture that won 22 straight state championships, yours was a culture where you, they trust you and you have mutual accountability to the team. Uh, I've always loved that message of yours. Oh, thanks. Now, Corey, I want to know when and why did you start Akamai Training and Consulting? Yeah, it was, it was scary. <laughs> I'm still scared. Uh, I started in 2015, May, and I started it because I actually had a conversation with a friend, um, Craig Lovett, and he told me his one regret in life was not starting his own business. And I was at the stage where I thought, I had all these ideas and I had this passion for, for what I really wanted to build and develop, but I was scared. And we had that conversation and it triggered me to just make the jump to start it. And I started it... Um, because I think the greatest thing you can uncover in life is what, what is your purpose. And my purpose, I believe, um, is to ignite the spirits of every person I touch to live an inspired, uh, energized, and engaged life. And that's the origins of Akamai. It's about doing things the right way. It's about helping people understand that their perception of maybe their team and what's happening may not be the perception that those following them have. And how can I help connect that to where, and here's the end goal, Rusty. I want everyone to come to work to life happy. That's, that's it, right? It's, life is tough, and it's gonna throw you obstacles a lot, and so we, we need to shift how we live and the purpose with which we live to do that, and, and that's really the vision for Akamai. I like that because, you know, when you said about that you were scared, I mean, that's like fear in a great way because yeah. it's something meaningful, but sometimes, I mean, you're, that, that causes you to do something different, something maybe better. Yeah, well, and one of your key concepts that I love, the difference between excited and nervous. And uh, I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when I read your book, it really hit home to me. If you just shift the wording in your head to, I'm excited, and I didn't know that at the time that I started Akamai, there was a lot of nervousness, but it's so true. Um, and the way that I like to approach everything now, and you know, one of my, my key uh, workshops that I do is, is called Creating an Inspired Mindset, because I've realized every day we wake up and it's very easy to focus on what's wrong in our lives, or we can focus on what's right. And ultimately, there's a great quote everyone knows, which is, if you wake up expecting to have a bad day, you'll rarely disappoint yourself. And, uh, and so if you just shift nervousness to excited, all of a sudden your day looks entirely different. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. I mean, it's all about the mindset and the mindset is huge. And you have been such an amazing executive performance coach. W why do you love that so much? There's a moment in every time when you're working with someone where you, you see the light kind of go off. And uh, I, you know, I always tell people leadership is a value perception. It's not how you think of yourself as a leader, it's ultimately how the people who are being led by you feel about you. And 
I think it is really, really hard to be totally self-aware. And I think it's because people don't tell you. <laughs> you know, I, you know I, I used to, at Starwood Hotels, I used to be the guy who'd go in after an associate satisfaction survey, and I'd get to talk to the team and say, hey, how do you, you, know, how do you feel about your leader? And we'd send their leader out of the room, and uh, I'd say, if there's anything you want them to know confidentially, I'll communicate what you've said, but I'll be the, the, the medium to do it. And a lot of times, people would give them great scores, and then they had all these issues that they wanted their leader to work on. Yeah. And I'd always ask, have you guys told the leader this yet? <laughs> Nearly every time they go, <laughs> no, no, no way, man, absolutely not. And that's what I've realized. So as a performance coach, what my goal is, is I'm going to interview your people, and I'm going to find out what, what's really happening, and then I'm going to help just steer you. Steer you to, to figure out, are you leading the right way to where your team really wants to be around you? And, and when you have those moments where they kind of go, oh, you know what, I, I probably need to change what I'm doing and, and start doing things differently, that, that to me is like gold. It, it's just it's an, a phenomenal feeling. And you and I have talked hours and hours about the concept that I wrote about in the book about boss versus leader. <sighs> Such a key concept and one of the hardest ones to achieve. You know, because I think here's another big challenge in life. If you want to learn sports, we give you a coach, we teach you. If you need to learn Excel, we give you a coach, we teach you. However, for whatever reason, when people get into leadership, we often go, hey, you're great at what you do. You want to lead some people? And then you go, yeah. And they go, great, you're our guy or you're our lady. And then they don't really coach you on leadership. Yeah. So oftentimes, the first step is just, is really just blowing it back to the basics. And it's kind of, sometimes you have these people get the epiphany of like, I've never thought about a lot of these just very core leadership traits that I need to do. What are, Corey, what are some mistakes you often see leaders make? Oh, um, you know, the biggest one, actually, and this ties into the book, Rusty, is not setting up the right culture. Um, and a culture has trust, and it has support, and it has, and it has purpose. Um, and I think we need to talk about purpose every single day. And leaders, I think, inherently talk about goals. Here's what we want to achieve. And honestly, that's not really motivating because when we don't hit those goals, what happens? Now I'm gone. Whereas if we talk about purpose, here's what we're doing. Uh, you know, elite parking, Ryan Chun, when I first met with him, he didn't say, we, he said, in fact, we're not a, a you know, they're, they're valet. He said, we're not parking cars. We, we are an organization that builds people and, and changes the way that people view their arrival experience. That's purpose, right? And when leaders communicate purpose and passion, and then support, and, and the last one I'll add to, to that, I mean, there's many, but is if I fail, what happens? If you walk in and you make me feel terrible that I've failed, then you may lose me forever. If you walk in when I fail and you say, hey, Corey, try again, what'd you learn? I've failed many times myself. You know, I always laugh like leaders, uh, we make mistakes all the time and we don't get held accountable for them. But sometimes our, our team makes mistakes and right away we want to go and say, I told you, I told you not to do it this way. But really, we got to give people that, that realm of support. If I think you believe in me, I'll, I'll, I'll do amazing work for you. Now, I, I love hearing that, Corey. And I want to know, Corey, you know, you've dealt with so many companies and leaders. Um, what are some common challenges you, you see in business leadership? Sure. Um, you know, one of the biggest ones is a lack of development. And here's what I mean by that. I often meet with a company and maybe things aren't going well for whatever reason. And I say, okay, well, let's talk about what have you done to, to develop the skill sets for these people. And a lot of times that looks like, I mean, we do onboarding when they got hired, you know, and that could have been 15 years ago. So in business leadership, people, when they feel an investment in themselves personally, like with every executive retreat I do, I like to say we need to do something where they feel there's a development and educational purpose that they walk away going, I'm just a better person because I got to learn this. When there's that investment, people thrive on it. So, you know, financially, training costs money, right? And it's, it, we all know this, it's the first thing cut. A lot of times places will go, for the last five years we've planned on doing some development, but our, you know, our GOP was down and we couldn't do it. So. I think really dedicated energy and focus on people's development is probably the number one thing that'll lead to great success for, for business leadership. 
Corey, that's why we can talk for hours and hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. Yeah. yeah. Well, and all your stories, Rusty, the stories in the book about how did you get your players to perform? There was always an investment in them. And yeah. a lot of times, from, from what you've told me, it was your time. Yeah. That's the greatest thing in, you can give anybody. Yeah. Time. Totally. Yeah. Corey, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond leadership. Excellent. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Corey Campbell. We will be back in a quick 60 seconds. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the one and only Corey Campbell, who is the CEO and founder of Akamai Training and Consulting, and today we are going beyond leadership. Corey, After School All-Stars is a fantastic organization led by Kimi Takazawa. I know you're a big part of it, and I was a guest speaker there as well, yeah. but tell me briefly about After School All-Stars. I was really lucky. Uh, Greg Dickens got me onto that board about four years ago. Um, the, the organization itself is national, um, actually sponsored by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nice. And, uh, and it helps put children that are at risk for, for doing things after school, um, and it puts them in sports and study hall. And uh, I, I love it because it kind of connects my past with sports. Um, it connects my past going up to New Jersey and living in some rough areas. And, and basically giving kids an, a venue to do something productive and positive in their life. And for me, I mean, I, I, told, I mentioned before, I really like to help people, and there's yeah. nothing more satisfying than, than just being with children and, and helping them, you know, shape their vision of life before maybe life, you know, puts some tough stuff in and, and starts to, to send it on a downward track. Just keep it going upward. Sure. No, I, I love all of that, too. I love that, yeah. working with kids and the, the coaches, the leaders that influence the kids. Right. Yeah, because it's immense. Yeah. Right? <laughs> people remember their coaches for their entire life. For sure. Now, Corey, of yours too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, let's talk about the book Beyond the Lines. Um, uh, you yeah. wrote an endorsement on the back cover, and I'm glad everyone gets to see your face now. They can put the, the name to the, what you wrote on the back cover. And you were involved in the process of me really putting the book out. But tell me what you like about the book. I mean, Rusty, first of all, it was so cool to be brought in early when you were still in writing phase and just brainstorm with you about it. And uh, I remember when we would talk about things, everything you said, I was like jumping out of my seat. I'm like, Rusty, this is what I talk about every single day in leadership training. Uh, I think the way that you put it together is so incredibly well organized. Uh, I mean... I was, I was almost like, thank you, Rusty. You wrote the <laughs> blueprint for the leadership training that I've been trying to build and develop. And, uh, and I mean, literally, I brought it here because I, I carry this with me every single place I go. And when I need a new thought or a new idea, or I just want to trigger something inside my brain, I look into this book and the messages are clear, they're simple, they're precise, and they're impactful. You know, every single thing and every single title, uh, I was like, is he reading my brain? Am I reading his? I don't know what's happening here, but I love this book. <laughs> well, I feel so honored and grateful that, that you love it and yeah. you want to use it as a tool in your upcoming trainings, but you've been, you're almost finished putting together a workbook that yeah. relates to it. Can you 
tell our viewers about that? Yeah, so I'm super excited. Uh, March is my target rollout date to roll out the Akamai Training and Consulting Leadership Series. And uh, we are going to be using Beyond the Lines as one of the core curriculum for the book because it follows every single thing that I think leaders need to be successful. Uh, and, it's, and it's done in such a way um, that, so basically I'm taking the lessons that are in there combined with you know, my experiences from years and we're building a workbook that will allow people to expand on the topics in there to really start to develop what is my culture. The one thing I ask leaders never to do is just adopt the culture of their leader uh, because sometimes it's not the right culture. And sometimes they may be in a toxic culture. And in fact, I hear this all the time. They go, I love what we talked about today, but I'm incapable of implementing it because of my leader. And, and my feeling is this, that may be tough, but you always have the power to set the tone for your direct team. And ultimately that has the power to move into the entire organization. So this book is going to help them and the series itself will help them uncover and perhaps discover who they are and what their leadership culture is going to be. No, I, you know, when I was writing it, I, my whole goal was to make sure that it was simple, relatable, where people who read the book feel like, you know what, I can do it right here, right now, today, and, and have that impact, a positive impact to inspire them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and we talked about this numerous times. I said, I think one of the most successful parts of the book is that I can pick it up, read a chapter, put it down, and walk away going, I learned something really, really great, and I don't feel like I have to continue reading in that moment, and I don't even have to re necessarily reference back to the last chapter. I can pick it up as I do. I pick it up some days, and I just go, let me just, let me just read one paragraph, and I get something for that day that impacts me. So it's very, very easily understandable and easily digestible, which is what I think in today's world, we, we have so much data everywhere. Yeah. I mean... I watch things on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, and it's like, how do I incorporate this into who I am? Your, your book's given a great model for that. All right. That, yeah, I like hearing all of that, Corey. Yeah. I, I'm glad it has that impact. Now, everybody wants to be successful, but everyone has different definitions of success. How do you define success? Ooh, that's a big question. Um, the, the first thing I would say is success can easily become ego. Uh, which means the things that I want to feel good about myself, I then put on to success. And I think that's a fallacy in life. Like, I think success ultimately is measured by the people around us. So I'm a big believer in like the kind of 360 degree kind of feedback to say, I'm only successful if, the, if those around me, friends, relationships, family, if they think I'm successful. So let's find out what it is they feel about me and how, what, you know, no matter what role I am. Right? As, a, as a friend, as a, uh, hopefully one day as a father, as a, as a boss, you know, success should be looked at through the eyes of the people around you. That's what I really believe. I like that. I like hearing that, Corey. And, you know, I mean, you're so awesome as a performance coach. I mean, one of the most popular, one of the best in the state. I know that for sure because I know what you do. And I want to know why are you successful? Well, I tell everyone I know Rusty Komori. <laughs> uh, that's a great question. I think I would sort of tie the same strategy to it. I don't ever base my success on how I feel I've done. I base my success on the feedback that I get afterwards and go, has this helped you? Has this impacted you in, in any type of way? And if it hasn't, I'm doing a good job. And if it hasn't, that's okay. If it hasn't, I okay, I failed. I'm, I'm totally fine saying I've, I've failed in this and I'm going to reorient. I mean, to me, failure is the greatest direction we receive in life as long as you've heard this concept, fail forward. Yeah. Right? We don't let it knock us down. We let it move us forward. And so I try as much as possible to constantly listen. Um, and I think it's what leads me to my success. And then the, the, the other portion of that is I'm just deeply passionate about what I do. I'm, a, I'm extremely lucky that I uncovered what I feel is my purpose in this world, which is to dedicate and all my energy to helping other people succeed in, in their lives. And by doing that, I feel great. I'll give you a quick example. Um, I always I teach people this Miracle Morning concept that was written by a guy named Hal Elrod, and and I have this whole idea about you know changing the way you view your day by by grabbing a door handle. And I've uh, I've been making a a competition, not a competition, but a, a game and said, if anybody for 40 straight days implements this, this way to enhance your productivity in the morning, 
I'll take you out for ice cream. <laughs> but you got to do it 40 straight days, right? Because research shows that creates a habit. And I always tell people, if we get to go to ice cream, I will get more from it than you will because I want to hear how it's impacted your life. And yeah. that, is, that, that, that energizes me. That inspires me. Corey, what's an important lesson you've learned in your life? Uh, there are many. Um, I, I, you know, Rusty, I'm going to give you a, an example that I use a lot in training. And, uh, and it comes from a quote. There was a quote by Abraham Lincoln. He said, apparently, I don't like that man very much. I should get to know him better. And, uh, and I saw that at first, and I was like, well, that, what does that mean? I don't understand that. And here's what I've come to realize. This world, we judge people rapidly. I went, to, I went from an all-white high school to an all-black high school, and I saw how quickly people judge based on the color of skin. And when I was at uh, Sheridan Waikiki, I was working with a guy at one stage. Um, we, we, we generally were there about 10 to 12 hours for a shift, and this guy was out in eight hours. And uh, I remember I, I got really upset, and because I, I, I had to work longer. I was usually there 12 to 14 hours to pick up the extra work. And I stopped talking to this person. And I remember judging them and thinking they're lazy. And I went through a training at Starwood Hotels in 2007. It was an emotional intelligence training. And they said, there's another story here. Find out the bigger story. We only see a very microscopic view of everything. And I thought, OK, what can I ask this guy that will get the story? Because I wanted to say, why are you so lazy? Yeah. <laughs> right? And it took me a while to come up with the question. And I went up to him and I said, hey, I noticed you tend to bounce out of here at eight hours every day. How come? And I'll never forget the, the, what he told me. He said, my mother has cancer, and I go home and I help her. I, I cook for her. I help her bathe. I take care of her. And he said, honestly, man, I don't really care about this job that much right now. I care about my mother. And I'm, I'm sorry if this impacts you, but I, I don't really care. And uh, I still get chicken skin every time I tell this story because I could have gone my whole life disliking this person, hating this person, perhaps thinking they were lazy, and it took me one question to get the other side of the story. And to this day, I often think, maybe that he's a greater human being than I am. Would I be willing to give up my entire life, social life, to take care of my parents? I mean, I hope that I would, but he was doing it, you know, and it, and it took one question. And I often wonder all the time in life when we see these people just being judged for whatever reason. It's not to say I was happy that he was out <laughs> at eight hours, right? That's not the lesson here. The lesson yeah. is there's a reason every human does everything that they do. It may be just be that they, they had a tortured life and now they're struggling to, to compensate in some way. We can always develop empathy through that question. And that's what I learned from that experience is never to just assume I know what's happening and to dig deeper. And, you know, misunderstandings and misperceptions, they cause so many problems in the world. But, and Corey, you have been inspiring tons of people. You know, before we wrap, I want to know who inspires you. You know, the, the easy answer, um, my, my parents uh, and my brother, um, they, they inspire me every single day. Um, but that's the easy answer, so I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll go a little deeper. Um, Rusty, you inspire me. Uh, the way that, you know, we've had so many um, moments to talk about how you coached for, for 22 straight seasons and, and, and made championships. And the way that you constantly thought about your team and interacted differently with each team member, um, I think about that all the time. Uh, and the last one, I have to mention him because he, he continues to inspire me this day. Um, my, my first boss in the hotel is Kelly Sanders. Uh, he has limitless energy and passion, but what he does the best of any human being I've ever met is he genuinely cares about his people and he genuinely supports you. Uh, you know, if you make a mistake, he's the one coming in there going, okay, what, what are we doing next? <laughs> you know, how do you build from this? And uh, he, he, he inspires me in how he lives his life and, and treats the people around him. So. Well, I like that. And Corey, you inspire me too because you're so positive. And I love your insights that you shared about leadership and everything else on the show today. I really want hey, to thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me be here. This was awesome. <laughs> this was over a year we were talking about this book. and or Over a year, right? Yeah. So it's neat to, to kind of be on here and talk a little bit about it. Awesome. Thank you, Corey. Absolutely. Anytime. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii, and a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information about my book and TV show, please visit my website, RustyKomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that this show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.